I think it's uh, I think it's a very honest record. I mean, it's very honest, sort of like of of what I'm about in terms of making songs. There's there's enough humour on it to balance the the serious side of it, and there is a serious side of it. There is some some of the the, the lyrical contents of the songs, which I feel quite strongly about. And there's also a humorous side, which I also feel quite strongly about. I, I think it's important not to take yourself too seriously, but there are some things that should be taken seriously. So there's a... In a sense, this is... I mean, it's the second solo record, but it's the first one since you... Because when you put out the, the other record, Tattooed Millionaire, you were still the singer of Iron Maiden. Yeah, well, what, what I figured was that um, every record I ever did my whole life, I did for somebody else. But what about but, the first... Bruce Dickinson record. Yeah, I was still in Maiden, so Maiden was still like, you know, my number one priority. And um, so it was kind of a, it was a part-time record. I mean, we wrote it in 10 days. Because um, it was something to do in the summer. You know, the studio was so empty. It was just a fun type Ooh, of thing. Let's go have some fun and make a record, you know. And anyhow, my friend Yannick was gonna sell his equipment and quit playing guitar if he didn't make a record soon. So that was kind of like, that's a tragedy, you know. So we gotta make a record. and. Um, that's what we did. So uh, I kind of had it sort of like a bit limited, you know, uh, fairly traditional, you know, nothing too uh, out there. And um, then when I started to make this second solo album, I thought, well, maybe I should make a record that is a bit more radical and that, that, that really does reflect exactly what I want to do. Because you're doing pretty, like I, you just said, you're doing whatever you want to do on this record. Yeah. You have the final say and everything yeah. like that. And, um, that kind of opened um, Pandora's box because I realized that if I was actually going to do that, what I had to do was leave Iron Maiden. Because... Stop with that thought. We're going to come back. We're going to find out about the leaving Iron Maiden and more stuff about Bruce Dickinson. So stay tuned. We've got more Headbangers Ball. We're back with Bruce Dickinson. And as we were saying just before, that you have officially left Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah. I mean, I quit... Uh... God probably a year and a half ago. I actually, you know, pulled in uh, Rod, uh, who's my manager, and still my manager, you know. Uh, and uh, I played him some of the stuff I'd been uh, tinkering around with, because um, I recorded like two entire albums of material, all different stuff, um, before starting to record Balls to Picasso even. So, I mean, I, I was really in a whole big process of trying to find out what it was that I wanted to do and um, the decision to leave Iron Maiden was a, it was a difficult one, but it was it didn't take that long. Was it on good terms? I mean, oh yeah, still, yeah, so sure. You're still talking oh, to yeah. the guy. I mean, we're the same record company in, in the rest of the world, you know, in EMI, it's same manager, um, same offices, same whole situation, you know. I mean, Yannick, who's always been a friend of mine for a long time before Maiden, he lives across the street from me. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just something you really had to do. You had yeah, to go. Yeah, it, it was nothing to do with. Um, it was nothing to do with them, if you see what I mean. It was all to do with me, the way that I felt about music, the way I felt about my life, about my emotional life, everything that I wanted to reflect in, in, in the music that I did. And I felt that I couldn't somehow put it into the framework that the Iron Maiden guys were, were, were happy playing with. Who are the members that you have playing with you now? Well, the guys I did the record with, um, there were a bunch of guys I met in uh, Los Angeles, uh, a band called the Tribe of Gypsies. I started writing some songs with their guitarist, Roy Z. And the reason I got involved with them was because I was trying to get them or help them to get a record deal because I thought they were a really cool band. Um, as it turned out, I started writing songs with Roy. He was like a huge fan of even like early stuff I did, Samson stuff before Maiden. He gave me some riffs. We started writing, we wrote a couple of tunes, we wrote a couple more, and then I went, this stuff is really cool. It's got its own direction, it's got its own vibe. The two albums I did before were good, but they, this just seems to be so, like, focused. Let's go with this. Um, of course, by now, the, you know... Got to catch up again. We're going to find out about more stuff with Bruce Dickinson, so stay tuned. we got much more. Headbangers Ball. There's a method about the song, because this was a song that gave you a little bit of trouble in the recording. This, and this song night. survived all three um, albums, and it changed on each album. And the process I was going through 
and the, the doubts that were in my mind about whether or not I could be creative in a new way after 12 years with the same band and the same people. Uh, the fear that, you know, oh my God, what happens if I put this record out and nobody buys it? You know, all those kind of thoughts. Because is that a fear? I mean, everybody knows, okay, Bruce Dickinson, everybody, a lot of the people know you, but are you always scared when you're putting, I mean, was I'm, it always that way, even with of Maiden? Co of, co of, you know course, you're always like, of course, of course, of course I'm, you're not going to believe this, but I, for the life of me, I, I <sighs> when I'm doing something, uh, and I get involved in something, I get really committed to it, I go for it, and then I finish it, and I'm just like absolutely besieged by terror. That, why would anybody like this? You know? And, and, and I'm just like, well, I like it, but I don't, oh God, you know, I don't know if anybody else is gonna like this. But you've gotta do stuff that you like, rather than saying, well, I hope this is what every, all the kids are into oh, right yeah, now. Oh yeah, quite. I mean, and, and what happened with, with this record was that there was a kind of a, um, uh, an insanity, particularly because, I mean, I'd, on the first, making the first record, I'd spent the advance, you know. Making the second record, I spent all my own money. Making the third record, I was spending money that basically I didn't have. Mm -hmm. um, and when we recorded Tears of the Dragon, uh, that was the, one of the last tracks we recorded, and Roy and the producer wanted to record it again. And I went like, we've done it already. Let's, let's play the video, we and then we'll come back again, and talk and a little bit about it. that song. Yeah. So, lead into the video. Tell us. Oh, well, I just was. Well, go ahead. But Tears, Tears of the Dragon. There you go. And it's cool. <laughs> you just saw the latest video from Bruce Dickinson. And how much say do you have in the, in the making of videos? Like, did somebody come up to you with an idea? Because I watch a video. It's a good video. I don't understand it, though. I mean, does you don't? it No. Does it, does it intertwine, or is it just a lot of cool images that are good to look at? Or does it mean something that I'm just completely clueless on? Oh, you need to watch it a lot. So that's what it takes. Explain it. Um, no. Like, did you say, because <laughs> you don't understand. Did somebody just give you an idea and say, okay, we want this guy, this big fat guy, to be standing here doing this, and then we want you to go in the water, and then we want this big bat guy. I mean, did anybody give those, or were those images that were important to you to have in the video, or? The, wa the water images uh, were very important, and the, the big totem uh, pole thing was very important to me. Uh, the other images we worked in with the uh, with the director, um, and uh, most of them refer to the a lot of those images refer in part to the lyrics. Um, some of them are kind of lyric. The song image. isn't about a dragon then. Nothing to do with dragons whatsoever. I actually don't know why the song is called Tears of the Dragon, and I wrote it. I think that's cool because I don't think you should know everything about what you do. Do you sometimes though go back and look at your lyrics? And able to look at them almost as an outsider, like you write them and go, wow, that's kind of cool. Well, I wonder what I was thinking when I came up with that. Sometimes, yeah. Because that's kind of neat, I think. But, but that's, that's, one of the, that's one of the things that makes songs last, that you can keep going back to them. And one of the things that I like about the video is um, you, should, you should watch it with your girlfriend. Uh huh. So that's what it it's is. It's a very the, it fit, a, a lot of a lot of women um, watch the video and and they understand. It's not an obvious. I think she'd look at the naked fat guy and relate to that guy and say, you know, Ricky. That's that's. Stay that's, tuned. We're going to come back and talk to Bruce Dickinson. Dickinson, we were just talking about books that you earlier wrote. Cause I just mm -hmm. remembered. Yeah. That you had written some books. Mm hmm. Couple. Yeah. And what what was this? Uh, there was sort of um, obscene. Um, comic passes. So of, I guess I was completely off in thinking that you wrote a children's book where I got that from. Yeah. It must be confused with you and Johnny Cash. That was it. Johnny Cash wrote the children's book. Yeah, this, they're definitely not children's books. Uh, in fact, we, we had complaints in the British Houses of Parliament that people might think they were children's books. Because was it a drawing on the front or was it? Yeah, but if you look closely, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bulimic woman being, uh, being purged of, um, uh, of like projectile vomiting by a a guy right. dressed as a preacher in uh, women's underwear. <laughs> the, I mean, the confusion <laughs> why it would be... See, that's why I, I automatically That's why figured, you thought it was a children's, children's book. book. Preacher, yeah. throwing up. So you basically don't have any downtime. I mean, when during Iron Maiden, even, you were working on solo stuff. And then, well, after the solo stuff, you were doing books. No, Are you no, still writing during, now, or...? During, during the Maiden time, I was doing the books. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean the, the, the first book I wrote back in 85, and um, it took a couple of years for it to get published, and then it got published and it sold a lot, and so they said, write another one, you know. So I, like, bashed away and, and wrote another one. When you're writing a book, is it is it sort of the same way that you would write music, or do you just kind of, I mean, I'm sure the books take a lot longer, and book, it's just like, it's, books, just write. It's just, it's just really, really hard work. It's, it's hard slog writing a book. What kind of writing are they? Is it their story? Yeah, it's a novel. 
So you wrote 200, a novel? 200 and something, 30 pages, 40 pages, the second one, and whatever it was the first one. Mm -hmm. We're going to come back and we're going to talk to Bruce Dickinson. Stay tuned. We're talking to Bruce Dickinson. New record came out four days ago called Balls, Balls to Picasso. Where'd you get the title Balls to Picasso? Um, well, you say urinal and we say urinal, but it's um, uh, the fourth bathroom. Ur urinal. Toilet. Urinal. Urinal. It was above the urinal at university 15 years ago. It's written. Graffiti. Forever. Immortalized. Balls to Picasso. Say, hey, I wrote that on that. That's brother. right. Toilet, where's my money? Yeah, probably. Yes. <laughs> so now that the record's done, and I mean, you said you even got that kind of scared feeling. For people that want to go out and buy the Bruce Dickinson record, what type of music are they going to hear? Are they going to hear something that's completely different than Iron Maiden? Because it's still got the singer that was in Iron Maiden, so people are going to automatically think, oh, Iron Maiden. But tell me how this completely differs from anything you've done before. Well, it's um, what I was trying to put in this record was a whole bunch of influences that you wouldn't normally get in hard rock music. So like? we, we had, well, we had a bunch of you know Latino, uh, Mexican American rock musicians. And uh, we, we stole a bunch of uh, Tamla Motown riffs and put them in as the bass rhythm tracks, whacked in a load of African and Latin percussion, uh, mixed all that in so you couldn't hear it, but it made your butt jiggle. So and these then, kind of things that you wanted to do before with Maiden, but couldn't really do it? Well, it's the kinds of things that you find out that you can do. Like there's, there's a couple of tracks where there's a bit of rapping involved. There's a couple of tracks Who does, where Do things, you do the rapping? Yeah. Or? You know, and stuff like that. It's like, wow, you can do that. There's a couple of things. There's a couple of real heavy reggae things on there, you know. And and the the thing is, is that the whole thing is meshed together by these raging, raging slabs of guitar. This is some of the heaviest music I've ever made in my really? life, you know. And at the same time, some of the coolest and some of the weirdest, you know. Um, it's you won't hear another record like this this year. Well, the new record is out. Came out four days ago. Called Boss Picasso. It's Bruce Dickinson. Thanks again for stopping by, and. On the road real quick, when are we going to see you um, live? ASAP, as soon as I can possibly get out there. I've got a real young band, 19-year-old Italian drummer. So they want to get out there and play. Yeah, a couple, couple of 24-year-olds on guitar and uh, bass, stripped down, you know? We'll keep you... Bruce Dickinson, I mean, you don't need no introduction. This is the Headbangers audience in Latin America. Hello. Hello. Eh, estamos, estamos con él porque hay un, un nuevo disco y esto es Scan Works, el nuevo álbum de Bruce Dickinson, que es técnicamente the third album. So, Bruce, I remember two years ago you were very proud about what you did in Balls to Picasso mm -hmm. because it was like your first step eh, after. Um, to a millionaire so you were very proud I said it's a good record how do you feel this time you're like very excited about it well the the last record was, was like a really big success and it was a it was a nice transition to me you know okay. you know having said I was going to leave you know a great band like Maiden and, and then moving out of it it was a nice transition but I, I really needed a permanent band and the band that I toured South America with on the last tour is now that band. We've written all these songs together. Jack and Dina's produced it, and it's, it, it, it's, I don't know, it's the business. I mean, it's, it's exactly what I hoped I would find when okay. I, you know, when I left. So we could take something like, like chemistry between like oh, that the, band on tour, the, and the, maybe decide. There's, there's definitely a chemistry there, but I mean, I, I think the, uh, the sheer ability of something like Alex on guitar. Okay. Yeah, hello with my voice. I mean, it, it's a very... It, he's just coming from a completely different place uh, to anybody else that I've ever played with in terms of, you know, guitar and songwriting and everything. And that's why this album sounds so cool and so different. In the Balls to Picasso, the people who actually record the album were like, I understand, a band like Mexican-Americans from Gypsies, yeah. am I right? Yeah. So then... Your band came on tour. Then you discovered your. Sure. Well, one of the one of the um, the uh, sort of heartbreaking things about the tribe was that um, at the same time as I loved them as people and everything, they were their own band and they wanted to succeed. And I um, and there was no way I could sort of take them out with me on the road. It just would not have, you know, been fair. 
you know, they, they wanted to do their own album and, and they've actually got to deal with, well, they had to deal with Mercury and then that fell through. And I think we've managed to sort of sort them out you know, with, with a deal um, in Japan now. So their album might be coming out. I mean, Roy Z is an incredible guitar player. Um, and he's still, you know, a very good friend of mine. I mean, it wasn't like there was any kind of uh, friction or something. And in fact, um, one of the things we've been talking about is taking the tribe, if the tribe get the record out and we get the tour on our own, um, is taking the tribe with us. Okay. You know, so, so we can have like Skunk Works touring and then maybe with Tribal Gypsies as the support band. That would be really super cool, you know. Vamos a ver el primer video de este álbum y esto es y después vamos a, we're going to talk a little bit about the first video yeah. esto es back from the edge Bruce Dickinson. This is con Bruce Dickinson. Thank you once again very much for your time. And uh, there's can works going. I mean there's a new album you're going to do a tour. Oh yes, surely. absolutely. Um, in fact I'm I'm going down to uh, Brazil for four days of just like press and promo and stuff okay. uh, in April. Um, so that'll be coming up soon. Um, but yeah, we're um, we're looking to do. Well, we're starting touring the the end of April in Europe, okay. and we're touring right the way through. And basically, the whole of this year is going to be touring. Okay. Um, so we're going to be playing our asses off. What do you remember about like Argentina the last time about oh, Latin America? Argen Argentina, audiences? Argentina, man, is just spectacular. Why? Um, because I mean, it's more like. I don't know, they're wilder, they're... Um, they understand. Okay. I mean, it, it, it's really a difficult thing that, um, to explain in like... Uh, but it's just, when you, you play before some audiences and you just, you know that they know. I get it. They understand what you're doing. I mean, I, when I like sing in front of Argentinian audiences and we're playing and stuff, they're listening, and they're, it, it's, it's, it's sort of like a dream audience, Argentina. Okay. Because um, sometimes, you know, like you play, sometimes like even like an English audience, and sometimes they kind of, they listen with their heads too much. Okay. You know. Got it. And, and Argentina uh, is, it's like, and sometimes you play to an audience, and they, they don't listen with their heads enough. You know, they, they, they just go crazy. And, there's, and, and, and they, go so, they go so crazy, they don't actually hear any of the music. But Argentina, it's just this great relationship between the kind of passion and, and, and sort of like thought. And it's just been really cool. It's a great audience to play music to. Now that you're thinking about touring, about scan works, are you willing to do like, a, if you have the chance of playing like Chile for the first time, like Venezuela, Colombia, are you... We played Venezuela, we, uh, we played Chile last time. You played Chile last time, but yeah. not Venezuela and Colombia. No, Venezuela. not Venezuela and Colombia. So are yeah. you willing to do that? Like, oh yeah, like, we, we would love to play, I mean, look, we played Sarajevo. Right? Okay. We played Sarajevo. I'm pretty sure we can manage to play like Colombia or Chile or somewhere like that. You know? Okay, perfect. Vamos a hacer una pausa y vamos a conversar sobre todo porque vamos a ver unos videos del recuerdo con Iron Maiden y luego vamos a ver qué es lo que piensa Bruce de este presente y también de ese pasado tan glorioso. A la vuelta en Headbangers, solo Iron Maiden. You just have to ask us, that's the main thing. Ya estamos de vuelta en Headbangers, habían visto solamente una sesión de Iron Maiden, más bien por el recuerdo de Bruce Dickinson. One of the things that caught everybody's attention about your last tour is that you didn't do any Maiden songs. Uh, yeah. It's just like it was a Balls to Picasso, mm -hmm. so I mean, you said, I have enough songs to, to do. Now that the Iron Maiden is so concentrated in the X Factor, in the new album, Blaze Bailey and the new singer, would you consider now to do a couple of Maiden songs? <laughs> You're reading my mind, aren't you? Um, we are going to do one Maiden song. One? One. Uh, any name? No. Or, no, okay. That's no. A it, it, it wouldn't be a surprise otherwise. Okay. You know, uh, but I think the thing that, um, that changed my mind, two things. One was um, uh, this album. Okay. Right? 
it's such a strong album. I actually, uh, I, um, I don't want to say this like it's bullshit or something, but, okay. but I think this is the best album I've ever sung on in my life. It's okay. the best singing from me that I've ever done, right? And because of that, I don't feel that anybody who listens to this album would ever say, oh yeah, he's doing Iron Maiden songs because he has to, because what he's doing yeah. now sucks, you know. And I spoke to the band about it. Now, the band aren't Iron Maiden fans. So that makes it even more complicated, you know. I said, how would you feel about doing, yeah. like, an Iron Maiden tune? Okay. And it was really funny because they said, well, there's only one Iron Maiden song we could think of that we could maybe do. And so I said, well, would it be this one? I'm not telling you which one it is. Okay. And they said, yeah, yeah, actually, funny enough, it was. So, you know, something's working some way, you know. So we're going to do this one song. Uh, okay. It's going to be the last song in the set, um, right at the very end. By the time the people have started screaming for the encores, you know, the last yeah. encore they scream for will be that, that song, you know. Okay. So nobody could ever say that we were relying on maybe okay. like past glories or anything like We're just doing it because it'll be a blast and it'll be loads of fun. I'm happy to hear, I mean, like, you're so proud about the scan works. So what's, what kind of music did you, I mean, were you listening to just to bring some uh, contemporary edge to this album? Oh, Smashing Pumpkins, Soundgarden, Eight Pigs and Spacemen, Dub War, Skyscraper, um, okay. you know, stuff like that. So it came like naturally, it's like, I don't know, the step beyond the balls to Picasso, it's like... Oh, it's, well, Alex, Alex wrote all the songs with me. Okay, both of you, the yeah. player and you. Yeah. So, I mean, all these songs are me and him. And basically, the guitar stuff on this album is so twisted. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I can't play any of the stuff on this record. Okay. I mean, I can't even tune the darn thing the way he's got it tuned on most okay. of the tracks. And he puts it, I mean, he does like a weird tuning and then puts a capo on the fifth fret or the third fret or whatever. I'm like, okay. what kind of, you know, okay. what kind of man does that to a guitar, you know? Okay. Um, so, this is some pretty incredible guitar playing on this record. And um, the, the riffs and the things he came up with, just immediately, I mean, I, I'm a very, re I'm sort of reactive type person, you know, I mean, I hear something and I immediately go, wow, you know, I stop writing a bit of paper, okay. you know. And um, the riffs he was coming up with were those kind of riffs. I was like, shit, you know. This stuff's going to sound amazing. It's going to sound... I, I, I don't know whether anybody's going to like it. I don't... Really, you know, but I was like, I don't care. Okay. Because this is, this is really something new for me. And it was so exciting. Um, and uh, we're lucky, you know, everybody does like it, so... Ya lo saben, no le podría gustar más el disco Bruce Dickinson que Scan Works. Do you speak some Spanish? Do you no. Oh, my, my, my Spanish absolutely sucks, you know, quiero un taco, you know, okay. it's like quiero that's taco. it, you know. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, my wife speaks some Spanish. Okay, just you like know. one She knows what it means. Okay. Is that what it means? Okay. Yeah. Oh, damn. Okay, quiero un taco, así que... I know what a cucaracha yeah. is. Yeah? Yeah, because I saw it on the subway the other day, I never knew what a cucaracha is, no, that's cockroach, you know. Okay. Vamos a ver esto es eh, del álbum Boss to Picasso, también un tema ya muy popular, Tears of a Dragon, Bruce Dickinson. Lo dotado que era Bruce Dickinson para lo que significa el trabajo lírico de las canciones de Maiden, muchas de las grandes de Maiden fueron escritas por él. I was talking about, like, I mean, you're gifted in a way to write lyrics, I mean, you went from Power Slave to Peace of Mind, uh, eh, Boss to Picasso was a... Uh, kind of something something new for you what kind of things did you want to, to portray in scan works <laughs> lyrically speaking um well frank frank um uh, sort of usual stuff you know fear loathing paranoia idolatry okay sex public executions you know, usual everyday stuff that goes through the mind of a twisted introvert, you know. <laughs> okay. Masquerading as a twisted extrovert. It, it, it's, um, besides the production of uh, Jack and Dino, which, I mean, I guess, helped to a more, like, 90s sound, yeah. uh, there's, like, 
something to be told about the artwork. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just the, the artwork is really cool. Um, it's uh, a picture taken by a guy called Storm Thorgerson, who did all the, uh, among other things, Pink Floyd album covers. Okay. And loads and loads of other things like Houses of the Holy by Led Zeppelin and a bunch of other things. Um, so he's worked for a long time on dreaming up an entire sort of visual representation of the album. Okay. In terms of the work, I mean, it, what's nice is I've known Storm for a long time. He actually directed the two videos that I did on Tattered Millionaire. Okay. So we worked together for a long time, and we always said we'd do an album cover together one day. And um, he actually interviewed me, like, several times before he gets around to doing the artwork. Okay. Um, you're very, like, into things besides music. I mean, you're, like, so, like, accomplished career, like, in, in music. And besides that, I mean, you go like very deep. I mean, you take art very seriously. In uh, like we know about, so I want the people to know about like your novels, about uh, your radio show, about things that you do. Why? Why? why, why <laughs> I mean, why do you why? do that? Why do you want Just, them to know about this? Why because, do you want to know? Because about it shows it? like it shows that like you're very open-minded. I mean, trying new things. I mean. What about your radio show? It makes you feel proud, your novels. I haven't read the novels. I heard the, the radio oh, show. Don't, don't, don't read the novels. Oh. Just look at the pictures. Okay. Yes. So it brings something else that you need to... Um, well, it's... Um, God, it's, it's all part of... Um, I get my kicks out of being um, like uh, a connection. Okay. Right. Um, and... I'm kind of like a slut, really. I'm a connection slut because I'm not really bothered what I'm connected to. Okay. You know, as long as there's okay. like, as long as there's like electricity flowing between me and it. Okay. I'm a happy camper. Okay. And what I've found is that being on a stage is an amazing connection okay. between music and between an audience and what they think and what the band thinks and that that connection. And that's an amazing feeling. And I get, I get a huge buzz out of it. It's completely selfish. I get an enormous buzz out of being on stage and knowing that maybe I've, you know, helped to kind of help the evening along, you know. I don't know, okay. maybe made a few babies that evening or maybe, you know, people have like okay. gotten off or got drunk or seen God or had a trip or done something, you know. It's great. I mean, I help that along. Okay. And that's that's all really. You, you know, use me once, throw me away. You know, I keep trying to make records and be cool, and, and music and, and and books and anything that comes along really. But the thing I'm best at, um, it seems, by kind of popular consent, is singing. So that's kind okay. of what I stick with. Very short, few words. Shoot all yeah. the clowns. What do you remember? Oh Christ! Um, we wrote it in a a very um, a very boring office, and uh, we were given the ultimatum. Um, you know, this is Aerosmith Rocks, this is a cool record. Make this, I'll give you a record deal. So, me and Roy sat down and went, what does it mean? Okay. And so we were going, you know, jamming away, you know, and, and I was going, shoot, 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 and, sh and Roy went, hey man, shoot all the clowns. I went, absolutely. And that's how we wrote the song. Ahí va, el video. The balls to Picasso, I mean, shoot all the clowns. Bruce Dickens. Pinfield, this is Rock Soft, the show that's all about rock. We play rock videos, and we hang out with rock fans, and you never know who's going to stop by. We have cool guests here. You know, everything from, you know, artists, musicians, celebrities, A&R people from record labels, video directors. I mean, it's always a gamut, and everybody's a music fan without a question. And today, we've got Lenny Johnson, who does A&R TVT Records, and we've got Bruce Dickinson. Bruce has his sixth album out right now. It's called The Chemical Wedding, just released on CMC, and of course you remember also of being uh, the most important singer in Iron Maiden, as far as I'm concerned. And we have Celeste, our music fan, as well. Celeste is visiting us today. Now, we're going to be talking about all the videos we're going to see later on, but first, we're going to check out the title track from the latest album from Hole. It's called Celebrity Skin, right now on Rock Soft. This is Rock Soft. We check out rock videos. Cool people stop by, and we talk about music. 
and about those videos. Now we've got, uh, after the break, Goo Goo Dolls' new one, Slide, as well as Marilyn Manson's new video, which we'll talk about a little later on. Uh, first, I want to just ask uh, Bruce, let's talk a bit about how you actually got involved in music, and, and, and Iron Maiden, actually, too, as a second vocalist there. Um, well, I was, um, I was at university, huh, <clears throat> doing stuff, and uh, I was in a band called Samson, and they actually came up to me two weeks before I was taking my final degree exams and said, um, after a gig, and said, uh, we've got an album coming out and we've got a, a record deal and we want you to be our singer. And two years later, I was doing this show at the Reading Festival um, with them, and the band was kind of on the verge of splitting up anyhow, and that's when I got the offer to join Iron Maiden. Right. Now, Lenny Bruce Dickinson, of course, sixth solo album just came out, it's called The Chemical Wedding. Mm -hmm. And we've got Celeste who's our music fan now. We're going to see Marilyn Manson's The Dope Show mm -hmm. after the break, Celeste. What do you think? A lot of people talk about Marilyn pushing the boundaries in rock and that rock needs that. needs to be remain dangerous and surprising. Uh, how do you feel about it? I mean, do you think that uh, Marilyn does it for the sake of that or is it just his way of, you know, his creative outlet? Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think that he knows exactly what he's doing. He, he's a smart man. I think he's very intelligent. And he knows what he's doing. He's working it right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a good record, too. Very influenced by, like, you know, Bowie and T-Rex stuff. And it's very yeah. cool. Now, speaking of which, you know, one, one of Marilyn's records, he samples this uh, Arthur Brown song, Fire. I am a god of hellfire, and I bring you, and it's the part he uses, the intro to a very popular 60s hit called Fire by a crazy world of Arthur Brown, discovered by Pete Townsend of The Who. Now, Arthur's been around for years, and he actually is on your new album, reading William Blake stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Arthur, um, Arthur's 55 years old now still looks almost identical, has had the most amazing life and was years ahead of his time. In 19, 1973, Arthur did a record uh, called Kingdom Come, which had two keyboard players with Mellotrons, VCS3s, theremins and, you know, moves and all the rest of it. No drummer, had a drum machine. And... Uh, one of the first guys to do it, really. Bass guitar, well, it was a Bentley Rhythm Ace drum machine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which was, uh, you know, I mean, they, right away, people were like, Bentley Rhythm Ace, what a cool uh, name. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, Arthur's pretty uh, pretty out there. And uh, he was doing all the stuff, actually, that Alice Cooper and, and all these guys were doing a long time ago. His, uh, his first first show was uh, Arthur crucified on stage. That was his first appearance at the Royal Albert Hall, you know. And even before uh, Gene Simmons days, was he was also like, he lit himself on fire accidentally. Yeah, he had a big metal, I mean, I actually saw him do this um, a few months ago. He still does it. He has a big metal tray, and it's not like a trick. He fills it with petrol and sets fire to his head. <laughs> great. It's like, well, what do you do for an encore, you know? Uh, <laughs> no, he's cool. Uh, Arthur's a great guy. He's, he's a great excellent. guy. Great. So, I thought, you know, who better, but, I mean, it's a pretty apocalyptic record, this new record of mine, it's very heavy, and so I thought, who better to read William Blake's um, Strange Prophecies than the God of Hellfire, the original God of Hellfire. That's right, <laughs> so now you know where that comes from on that Marilyn Manson album, too. You might want to go check out some of that Arthur Brown stuff, as well as Bruce's new album. Marilyn Manson, The Dope Show, after the break on Rocks Off. Hey, it's Matt Pinto, you've been watching Rocks Off. Coming up after the break, Bare Naked Ladies, One Week. The album's called Stunt, they're the Canadian band. And uh, how do you feel about them? They kind of get uh, a little upset sometimes that people call them a novelty act. But I mean, there's, there's a lot of comedy in what they do. What's your feeling about Bare Naked Ladies? Um, I'm not really a fan. They're all right, I guess. The video's pretty good, but I'm, I don't really like the song that much. But the video's pretty good. Now, Lenny, it actually resembles a 1974 song by a band called Reunion. Life is a Rock with the Radio Roll Me, which was a big hit. Uh -huh. Kind of a thing where they would rapid fire, spitting out names yeah. of like songs and people from the like, 60s and yeah. 70s. Uh, it was a one-off that's been reunion. Yeah. Um, those guys may have never heard it before, uh, and it just kind of ended up. I didn't like that song either. I don't like this one. I, I, I must say, uh, this is this is. Um, I mean, if it's good pop music, then you know, okay, good pop music. I'm so utterly not interested in this song. It yeah. is, you know, and it seems a shame to mock the afflicted, but I mean, this is is complete garbage. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I love the fact that every, you know, voices their honest opinion, without a question. Of course, oh, I'll say what I mean if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, now remember, uh, you know, it's up for you to decide whether you like it or not, but you're hearing our opinions. And um, coming up, we'll see that Bare Naked Ladies after the break. By the way, I want to thank Lenny Johnson for stopping by with us and our TV directors. Bruce's new album is called The Chemical Wedding. It's the sixth album. It's out 
on CMC. It was released about a week or so ago. You can go out and check it out. You've been hearing a little bit out of it in the background. Thanks for Fair coming naked by. ladies, I mean, you can rag on my album if you want as well. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Celeste, our music fan, thanks for coming by. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching Rock Song. <laughs> Stop it all!